So hey, it's Rohan here, and welcome to today's episode of Analog Pixel. And in today's episode, I wanted to do something fresh, something different for the great peoples of the internet. But then all of that went to crap, and we got this video instead. This video is my top 10 Game Boy Advance games that are probably not on your top 10 list. This means that I can't include any of the most common Game Boy Advance games to feature on these such lists, which also means there are some great games that sadly won't be covered. To use as a guideline, none of the games can be on the top 25 Game Boy Advance games list, as it is one of the most popular lists on the web, and this list itself is based solely on the games in my collection, so if there is any other hidden gems you think I've missed, then I'd love to hear about them. And with that, let's get on with the show! Number 10! Karoo 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 Rin 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 this is a game about cute animals flying really colourful spinny helicopter things through a series of mazes that are really not designed for navigation in spinny helicopter things. This is an actiony, puzzly game mazey thingy mading that is highly frustrating, but oh so good. And you know what? Despite its solid controls and excellent level design, unique mechanics and colourful graphics, the reason it really makes this list is purely for the distressed face of the pilot when you hit something. I mean seriously, somebody give this guy some warm milk and cookies. Number 9, Tekken Advance. Okay, so this one isn't really much of a hidden gem, but it isn't on the IGN list and I loved it. Tekken Advance somehow managed to bring mostly functioning Tekken to a 32-bit Nintendo handheld console, and it reincarnated it as this godlike handheld fighter. I have put more bus hours into Tekken Advance than I feel I should admit, and for that, it gets a spot. Number 8, F. Motherfunking Zero. Has the world forgotten about this game? Does F-Zero mean nothing to anyone anymore? I'm sorry, but I was somewhat shocked that I even had the ability to list this game. It should have been on the IGN list. Now I don't care about what anyone else thinks. Number 7. Doom. Advance. While someone had to mention it, this is the game that, if not released on a certain device, will be homebrewed and forced onto that said device, and for good reason. This is an engaging, excellently crafted shooter that takes skill and pure 90s superpower to play. And besides, it's even more likeable for being a game that you can multiplayer in 3D and shoot stuff in. On a Game Boy. Number 6. Klonoa Empire of Dreams. Now, not many people are familiar with the Klonoa series. My first go at a Klonoa game was actually on the original PlayStation, however Klonoa made it just fine and intact on the Advance. It's an excellent solid platformer, and a really nice break from all of the equally good Mario and Kirby games on the platform. Number 5. CT Special Forces. This game series was sadly overlooked by many people. Despite being one of my favourite action platformers on the handheld, it is my number one most poorly named Metal Slug-esque game ever of all time, closely ahead of CT Special Forces 2 and 3, and they are just lesser casualties simply because they have a number in the title. And trust me, if you've ever played Unreal Tournament, having a number in the title of your game was everything. They should have called this something like Death Destruction Force Arena Tournament 2001 Megaton Edition. Now that would sell a game. I wonder what would happen if you crossed a side-scrolling shoot-'em-up with a well-crafted RPG and a Nando's Extra Hot Chicken Burger. Well, minus the chicken burger, Sigma Star Saga is the answer. I have had a lot of fun with this game, and it was a strong contender for this slot on the list, with Mega Man Battle Network lagging a little bit behind, but I figured this one would be a little less well known, so here it is and here it shall stay. Number 3. Iridian 2. There were very few shmups that I would consider more fun than Iridian 2. As to why, I'm not sure. Is it the fantastic music? The beautifully rendered graphics, the perfect difficulty curve, the huge range of unique upgrades and weapons, the varied enemy types and boss fights, I have no idea. But what I do know is that this is a great game, and really makes me forget about life just for enough time to be happy for once. Number 2! Drill Dozer! Don't worry, I won't probe you, I promise. Drill Dozer is an action platformer with originality coming out of its ears. It's a charming, fun platformer with some good puzzling elements thrown in. This even takes Zelda-esque boss battling into the platform formula. The developers clearly went to town into making this game the best they possibly could. Number 1! 
Mega Man I Just Died Again Zero. This game has the award for not only being my favourite game on the list, but the game that I most enjoyed without being able to complete it. This is a hard game, but everything is so well made and tight, while the graphics are so pretty I can't help but love it. The setting goes something like this. You are bossing it out casually as Zero after waking up a century after you supposedly died, being resurrected by a scientist named Seal and a cyber elf that gave its life in exchange for your own. You decide to help her and help the rebellion destroy some stuff, and Mega Man lore gets super funky, the end. All you need to know is this is a great game and it's available in a re-release collection for the Nintendo DS if you are so inclined to buy it on a more modern system.